Hello friends, we are aware of the fact that in functional programming, functions are treated as first class values. What do we mean by that? Well, it means that a function can be assigned to a variable. Once the assignment is over, we can use the variable to make a call to that particular function. That is the first aspect of it. Second is that we can pass a function and return a function. Pass to whom? Well, pass to another function. So we can pass a function to another function. We can return a function back. That's the second aspect of functional programming. And third aspect is ability to create functions or build functions at execution stage. And that is possible through a feature known as Lambda functions. And that is the topic for discussion today. Now, what are really Lambda functions? Well, Lambda functions are essentially anonymous functions. Normal functions have names. Lambda functions do not have a name. How do you define a Lambda function? Well, there is a keyword available to do so. Name of that keyword as expected would be Lambda. And this will be built at execution time. During execution, the function would be constructed and such a function which does not have a name and which gets constructed at runtime is known as a Lambda function. Why would we ever want to do this? Well, there are several suggestions where very small functions you are required to define. Rather than defining them elsewhere and making a call from some other place, right at the point where you are trying to make the call, that is where you actually define it. That way it becomes convenient to see as to what is happening. Otherwise you are required to shuttle between function definitions to see what a small function is trying to do. When such a situation arises, it makes huge sense to make use of a lambda function. A lambda function can take any number of arguments, but it can return only one single value. Let's see how do we go about defining these lambda functions. Well, to be able to do so, we must know the syntax for defining a lambda function. You just have to use the keyword lambda, follow it up with arguments that you want for the function, and then the expression or the body of the function. The return value would be the result of execution of the function. Whatever that value turns out to be, that value will be returned from a lambda function. <clears throat> With this much background, I think it is time to show you how do we go about defining lambda functions. These lambda functions, by the way, are also known as anonymous functions or inline functions. Anonymous because they do not have name and inline because they are defined right at the point of usage. That's why they are known as inline functions. This is the first lambda function that we are defining. It is going to receive argument as n and it is going to return n cube. So receives n and returns n cube. That is what this anonymous lambda function is doing. Let me give you a couple of more examples. Suppose I say lambda x comma y comma z. It tells us that lambda function can receive not only one argument, it can receive any number of arguments. In this case, it is receiving three. What is it returning? It is returning average of the three numbers. Point is that it can receive multiple numbers and ultimately you return only one number back. You are returning only the average. Don't think that lambda functions can be used only with variables which contain numbers. I can also create a lambda function for strings. For example, I may have a lambda function which receives a string and in the body what is done is that string that is received is trimmed of white space means anything to the left of it or to the right of it. If it contains white space, that white space will be eliminated the balance string would be converted to uppercase and then be returned. So that is what this third lambda function is doing. It receives the string, strips the white space 
and returns the string converted to its upper case equivalent telling us that a lambda function can receive one argument or more than one argument and that argument can be a number or a string so much about how do we go about defining a lambda function but just defining it in this fashion is not enough we must be able to use these lambda functions more meaningfully let me show you how that can be achieved the way we can assign a normal function to a variable we can assign even a lambda function to a variable for example we may say p equal to lambda n n into n into n so we are assigning the lambda function to a variable p not only can we do that for a function which receives one argument we can also do that for a lambda function which receives multiple arguments so the second function which receives three arguments and gets the average that is assigned to q and i can do so even with a string argument by saying lambda s colon that syntax is important after the arguments we are supposed to give a colon and then s dot l strip r strip and upper strip of the white space from the left from the right and then convert the balance string into upper case return that string that is what this lambda function does and this lambda function we are assigning to a variable r once the assignment is over we can call the lambda function by saying p parenthesis 3 so 3 cube would be printed out or we may say print q 10 20 30 so average of 10 20 30 would be returned by this lambda function and that average would then be printed out similarly we can invoke the one which receives a string by saying print r and you are passing a string with space on the left space on the right this will be trimmed and nagpur would be converted to upper case that upper case string would be returned which would then be promptly printed by the print function good enough output of the second call would be 20 10 20 30 average would be 20 cube of 3 would be 27 whereas nagpur will be not in gp but in a gpur that entire string would then get printed out so we now know how to assign a lambda function to a variable and how to invoke it by saying p3 q 10 20 30 or r nagpur so we are invoking the lambda function here so that explains how the call to a lambda function can happen and these three statements indicate how the assignment of a lambda function to a variable can be done let's now try to use a lambda function as a argument for some other function we may say print lambda n n into n into n and then we are passing the argument as 3 rather than defining the function separately and then making a call as we did here we can combine the two and pass the lambda function itself as an argument whatever is the value returned by that lambda function that would be printed out not only can i do this for a function which receives one argument and returns its cube we can also do it for a lambda function which receives three arguments and returns the average how do we do that well we would say print lambda and then the function x y z are the arguments x plus y plus z divided by 3 is the return value and then we are invoking that lambda function by passing 10 20 30 30 so average would be printed out as 20 same thing i can do for the third function to which we will pass a string nagpur and it will do the l strip r strip and upper on that string and return capital ngp to us we can also pass a container as an argument for a lambda function don't think that we can use only numeric variables or string variables we can also use a container type like list or tuple 
as an argument to a lambda function. Let me show you how this can be achieved. We will create two lists, list 1 and list 2 containing some numbers within them. And then what I would do is, I would create a lambda function which receives a list and returns what? Return the sum of that divided by length means get me the average of all the numbers present in the list. Which list? The one that I pass to that lambda function. Sum L divided by len L will return me the average of the 5 numbers present in list 1 and that number that is average I would end up printing out. Let me show you that I can use a lambda function again this time to get sum of length divided by length of L but applied to LST2 rather than LST1. The difference here is that a lambda function you define right at the point where you are calling it. Hence, if you propose to call it multiple times, you will have to define it multiple times the way we have done in these two cases. So if a lambda function is going to be used very very frequently, then maybe it will make more sense to define it separately as a named function rather than an anonymous lambda function. So that choice you have to make. Once in a while if you are going to use the function, it makes sense to use a lambda function. But if the function is being called repeatedly, in that case maybe it will make more sense to have a proper definition with a name for that particular function. Good enough. So we learned three things here. One is we can assign a lambda function to a variable and use that variable to make a call to that lambda function. That was the first feature. Second feature is that we can use the lambda function as an argument to a function. For example, in all these three cases, we use three different lambda functions as arguments to print. And thirdly, the lambda function itself can take container type as an argument. In this case, that container type was list. In your programs, we may use any other container type as well. So that explains three features of a lambda function. Let me give you one more example where making use of lambda function will make sense. Suppose we have a dictionary of key value pairs. Key is oil, clip, stud and nut and values are 230, 150, 175 and 35. What we wish to do is, we wish to arrange these items in ascending order not by the keys but by the values. If I am to do that, I can make use of sorted function to which I will pass d dot items means I am passing key value pairs to sorted function and we are also going to tell it what the key that should be used for sorting is the value. Now how do we indicate that value should be used? Well, for that we use a lambda function. A lambda function which receives a key and a value and returns the kv1 means kv0 will give me key, kv1 will give me value. If I do this and then print out the dictionary, you will find that it prints out the dictionary in increasing order by the values 35, 150, 175, 230, these are what? These are nothing but values arranged in ascending order. And when we rearrange these values, realize that the corresponding keys also get properly arranged. With 35, what is associated here is not. So that remains, that association is not broken. 150 is for clip, so clip remains with 150. Similarly, 175 remains with stud and 230 is persisted with oil. To this lambda function, argument is the dictionary item and what it returns is the value out of key value pair. KV0 would have given me key, KV1 will give me the value. And that value will be used as a key for doing the sorting. That's how the sorted function works. 
so here it makes sense to make use of lambda function because you are required to define it only once rather than defining it separately with a name and then passing it to key we can define it right at the point of usage in such situations making use of lambda function is really sensible so much details about the lambda function that we wanted to study goodbye good luck and thank you